Eminem. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that Eminem was going to be able to cross multiple color lines and generational lines with his with his music? Did that ever occur to you? Well, when the you time, signed him? Ja, at the time, which was I think it was 1998, maybe 97, whatever it was, Dre was on fire. You know, Dre was really just he just you know he really understood a lot of what was going on. You know. But he also came off a weak album, but he was just, he was so in touch, you know, he was really, really on fire. And a kid came to my office. See, I was to be an intern, so I always like to help interns. So a kid came to my office and he said, he was an intern, he said, I, got, I heard this white guy last night rapping. And again, I'm not a pioneer of rap, I'm not some guy who discovered mm -hmm. the genre. So I, only, I always heard that white rappers don't work. I said, I'll tell you what, you did a really good job. If you give me a CD, I'll play it for Dr. Dre. So Dre came to my house on Saturday because his kid was at my house and to pick up his son. And I said, Dre, listen to this CD for the kid, the intern, you know. And, mm -hmm. and Dre called me from the car and said, uh, bring this kid out here on Monday because Dre doesn't talk much. This was Saturday. So I got on the phone. I got to the kid, <laughs> brought the guy out here mm -hmm. on Monday. And um, that in fact, the guys in Dre's studio at the time were trying to talk him out of it while Eminem was in town working. He said, this is not going to work. Just... It's a white rapper. Hey, white rappers don't work. Hating? Yeah, yeah. Saying this is not going to work. And Jay said, I don't care what you think. This is going to work. That's, it's, it's, it's an incredible story. And they made my name is. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, last question. Beats by Dre. Mm -hmm. What made you think that you could create, you make music. You, as a producer, you made music. As a record company, you guided many artists' careers in making music. Where did it come to you that you could actually go from making music to actually making hardware? All I've ever wanted to do my whole life since I was 18 years old is move the needle on popular culture. Just move it, not copy it, not run after it. Move it, mm -hmm. move it forward. Advance it. Right, and um, that's all I ever want to do. So all these ideas or whatever we're doing, it's all about that. It's to move popular culture because that's what it, that's what got me excited when I was a kid. When somebody would come in and change the game or move mm -hmm. something, right? So I was with Will I Am one day, and he says, "You know, the record business is all screwed up. We're losing money." Jimmy, Jimmy, hardware. So I said, "Will," I said, "What are you talking about hardware?" He says, "Hardware." I said, "Will, you know, there's a reason this, why." This is a buzzword, hardware. That's what he said. <laughs> so I said, "Will, you know why they call it hardware? It's hard." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why they call it hardware. And he said, no, Jimmy, that's it. So, you know, about a year later, uh, I was walking down the beach and I ran into Dr. Dre. And Dre's a guy of a few words. He said, Jimmy, my lawyer wants me to sell sneakers. I just looked at him. I said, Dre, sneakers, let's sell speakers. And he said, wow, that works. So I got this word, beats. I don't know what to do with it. I said, Beats by Dre, headphones and speakers. That was the beginning of Beats. Are you serious? That was a walk on the beach, that was it. That was it. Jimmy, you know? what you've done uh, is an incredible contribution to society. You've pushed urban culture forward. It helped change the entire industry. Jimmy, thanks for coming, man. It was a pleasure. Thank it's you, great, my friend. Great discussion. Good. So this is The Tanning Effect. See you next time.